I'm Vinu Deschetti, Director of Sales and Marketing here at Aplusify. We are pleased to bring you educational webinars like this for you. We love to share what we've learned and what we know while we're learning something from you along the way. So before we begin, here are some quick housekeeping notes for this webinar. This will be a recorded webinar, so everyone will be muted. We would love to answer your questions as we go along. Simply enter your questions in the chat section or the Q&A part of the webinar, and we will get to them as soon as we can. We will be allocating some time at the end of the session for Q&A. So if we don't get to them uh, during the session, we will make sure we make some time at the end. We will be sharing the recording of this webinar with you as soon as it's available. You'll get the recording and the PowerPoint slides. So let's get started. Today, we have our COO, Neeraj Garg, as our speaker. Neeraj leads a team of over 200 certified Salesforce developers on our team. He's the man behind the internal task force of, uh, our, of our Salesforce experts that share lessons learned and best practices that are applied across our nonprofits and association clients. In this webinar, Neeraj will be talking about what exactly is meant by a data health check, why is there a need for it? How bad data in the system can impact organizational performance? What are the sources of ba bad data? And what are the real-time issues with ba bad data in the organization? He'll also show you some reports and dashboards that can help you get control of that data. And then also a bit of a data cleansing cycle that you might wanna keep in mind. Welcome on board, Neeraj. We uh, look forward to having, giving, having you um, give us your, um, all the goodies that you have for us. Thank you, Vino. So. And I think the poll didn't launch, so I'm going to re, um, relaunch that poll for everyone to take. So we know who's, who's got what in, uh, what kind of system, but in the meantime, why don't you get us started? Yeah, sure. So I think uh, this webinar uh, is all about this uh, data health check that most of us actually miss uh, because we do security health checks, we do system health checks. Uh, but I think one thing that we missed is the actual data health check of our system. Uh, because if uh, you realize, right, everything that we are using our system for is actually data. We are inputting data. Uh, we are actually storing that input data into our systems. And then it's the data which we are playing with uh, uh, for to understand our members, to understand our customers, to understand our donors. We are running, running analytics on them to understand their behavior, uh, how they think, what they anticipate. Uh, we make our system better for a better user experience based on obviously user data or the member data, right? And uh, then all these reports and dashboards that we pull uh, to understand our system or to see our system is all but filtered data uh, that we have in our system. So when we are relying so much on data for everything uh, that our system we are using for, so it becomes important that we do a kind of health check in our data. Uh, when I say doing a health check on the data, meaning uh, whether the data that we are actually storing in our system through various sources because there are there are disparate systems working uh, we are using lms system learning management system we are using association management softwares we are using crms and uh, every system is talking to each other right where it means like the data is flowing from one system to another and uh, we are relying on that data for our needs to understand our members or customers better so in this webinar, what we are going to do is just see like how we can actually uh, do a data health check uh, and maybe find out some real examples on 
how bad data or how uh, dirty data can actually uh, create numerous problems for you and how we can actually prevent it. So I think moving on to our first slide, which is what is data health check? Like I told you, data health check is nothing but uh, uh, running a simple check on your system uh, to understand if there are any kind of anomalies, any kind of errors, or any kind of inconsistencies in your data, and maybe pull those inconsistencies, inconsistencies and errors in a form of a report which we can understand, which uh, our business users can understand that tells us uh, whether this data that we are storing in our system is actually useful for us or is it something that is becoming like a swamp data where there is so much into it but we don't know like uh, how to use that data or that data does not look good to us so that is a kind of data health check so data health check is more about uh, running some kind of reports uh, and pulling out some kind of reports and dashboards from your system to check the data whether it's useful for us or it's it's a data uh, dirty data into the system now what is uh, what is dirty data right so anything that is a duplicate lying in your system so we often come up with uh, a lot of issues from our users that uh, we have got duplicates in our system so it can be duplicate first names present in your system it can be uh, duplicate email addresses so different persons but different email addresses or same email addresses or uh, different uh, home addresses or work addresses uh, for the same users. So uh, you cannot identify whether that address is correct or that address is correct. And what will happen is you will just end up uh, in getting reports for the users which are not correct, which will not make sense to you, which will not make sense to your sales team, maybe to understand your members, and you may be actually posting wrong information to them. So it can be a duplicate data, it can be inaccurate data where uh, imagine uh, you have your uh, marketing list or leads list and there are like all the phone numbers in that list are all wrong and your sales team starts connecting with those guys and they're just wasting their time because the phone numbers that are there are not correct. Now, if the phone numbers are not correct, right, the data that is there is does not make sense to you because it's just not providing any useful information to you. It's actually wasting your time and uh, you are not able to reach your customers. So it's it's a waste of time. So it's better that we correct that data and use it further. Similarly, you may be reaching your membership donors details and uh, you find that oh that address is wrong that is inaccurate and uh, uh, all my emails are going to a wrong id so all your marketing initiatives or your, all your initiatives to understand your members or your customers have all gone in vain similarly you may have inconsistent data uh, now as i told you you may have uh, different systems or sources of data so you may have your CRM like Salesforce or Salsa from where you are fetching in the data. Uh, then you may have your EMA system like Quantiva or Nimble from which you are fetching your data. You may have your learning management system. And all of these members or donors, they are all connected in these desperate systems that you have. But uh, it may be that uh, your membership date in one of the systems is in a MMDDYY format. In other system, it may be in a DDMMYY format. And when you are actually moving data from one system to another, uh, it's all messed up. Uh, it's storing data in different formats. And you are actually, you don't identify whether it's a day or a month. So a 
date of birth, which may be 16th February, uh, maybe 75 somewhere, uh, it's getting stored as maybe 021675. So you don't know whether it's a data or a, uh, it's a date or a month. And uh, you're not able to identify the anniversary, anniversary dates of your members. You are posting them on the wrong dates. So a whole lot of uh, uh, unsatisfied customer experience. And that is because the data underlying data in your system is inconsistent or it's inaccurate uh, or it's incomplete. Incomplete in the sense that you may not have the email IDs or the phone numbers of some of your members. And if you don't have that kind of information, how are you going to reach them and uh, let them know about your marketing initiatives or maybe provide them uh, right uh, content that you want to? Or maybe you want to post some maybe greeting cards or maybe birthday wishes to them or maybe want to send them postal uh, content uh, at their addresses, but uh, the addresses are all wrong. Uh, maybe the uh, digits in the phone are uh, not correct. So all these things, uh, they will just end up in providing a bad customer experience. And the whole purpose of using your system, the you have invested a lot of money in your AMS, you have invested a lot of money in your CRM system, you have invested a lot of money in your learning management system. But uh, the data that is underlying in all these systems is inconsistent, invalid, or maybe we call group it as dirty data, uh, which is not helping you, helping you out. And you're not getting that uh, ROI on your system that you have invested in. So this is why uh, I think data uh, health check is very, very important because if dirty data is lying into your system, uh, it, uh, it is just going to waste your time. It is going to provide a bad, bad customer experience. So, if we can just maybe follow some steps, which I'm going to tell you uh, in the subsequent slides, uh, follow them. Maybe we can uh, prevent this dirty data uh, storing into our system. We can regularly clean clean it and uh, maybe provide a better customer experience that we are using the system for. And Nirish, I think also to your point that it's not only about that member and donor experience um, that, it, whether it's a mailing that doesn't go out or their information being incorrect uh, when they register for a conference. Um, it also goes to the expectations of uh, internally within an organization in terms of if you think um, your director of marketing thinks that you're going to get out um, a mailer out to 10,000 members, then um, if, if that's the expectation, but when you get into the database and you notice that you're missing some crucial information to get that mailing out, whether it's a zip code or uh, a street address, um, those pieces are either incomplete or incorrect. Um, it's, uh, you no longer have the 10,000 members to send to. So also managing those expectations in house and kind of not only manage the expectations that you may have dirty data, but also that the, if the expectation is to send out the, the mailer to 10,000 people, what do you need to do to get that number back up to 10,000? Um, and uh, thinking about those things, like you're, uh, you're about to tell us about some of those things that we can keep our data clean, but also thinking about that when you're programming, um, forms to collect information uh, or when people do data entry of how you set those fields, what information you're requesting. And maybe even, um, I know one of my biggest um, concerns when it comes to conferences is we have a lot of user input. And when those user input, um, if they're typing in the wrong, you know, make the, I think Barbara, you mentioned in the chat, you know, the, the misspellings in streets and states and addresses. You know, those that's user input, but perhaps putting in a step in that process, um, which Neeraj is going to talk about in terms of um, in terms of checking that information to make sure it's correct and usable. That's true, so, you know, and I think you think that uh, if you have got ten thousand emails which your marketing director is expecting you to send to and. Uh, when you drill down to the system, you just find that uh, the 
the good data that is there is just maybe just a thousand mails so it has just reduced by one tenth and uh, all the effort that you have put in to collect the data all your marketing effort to collect those leads and that data has all gone right it has reduced by one tenth so your productivity your efficiency all has reduced right so which is why obviously it's very important and you are right uh, there can be mechanisms to stop it and that is what we are going to uh, talk in our further slides so i think let's move ahead so we are talking about bad data right but uh, we should exactly know like why uh, do we get bad data in our system because if you don't understand the source of the problem uh, we cannot take preventive measures to actually stop it uh, getting bad data in the system and then cleansing it is obviously a solution which where it is more of a uh, not a preventive approach but more of a approach where we have got the issue now we are planning to fix it and wasting our effort in fixing it but what about uh, just knowing these sources that can actually creep bad data into a system and preventing it at the first hand so that would actually uh, save you a lot of time in just uh, pulling the data reports and freezing it uh, before uh, uh, so i think there are some there are many sources of bad data but uh, we have noticed that there are four major uh, sources uh, where 95% of your bad data creep in so as i told you you have uh, systems which are running in silos so you have your CRM system, you have your uh, AMS system. So maybe you are running a, you have your Salesforce and you implement a new AMS, which can be Fonteva, Enable, or any other AMS. And you're trying to integrate it, right? So what will happen is uh, your CRM data, which is actually your legacy data, you will try to uh, move that data from that system to uh, your new system because you want to have both these systems talking to each other because you will have different marketing opportunities contacts that you want to transfer from one system to another and imagine a situation where uh, your bad data is already present in the uh, crm crm system from where you are actually uh, transferring the data so all that inaccurate data invalid data missing data duplicate contacts uh, duplicate stuff will actually flow in into your new system. So now you have got uh, two systems is exactly the same information. So you have not solved your problem uh, by seeking the data, but you have doubled your problem because now you have to clean the data from two systems instead of one. So you have to clean the system from your CRM system and you have also corrupted the target system, which is your AMS. So you have got uh, it was like maybe maybe your uh, CRM may have 50,000 records. Now you have got close to 100k records because combined data is 100k. So that much effort you have to spend in cleaning the data. So second uh, source of data can be that uh, uh, you have got uh, one system and you want to uh, another. Uh, you want to have an event management app integrated into your system, which is actually a third-party API. Now, this similar thing will happen. You will have another system that you want to integrate, maybe a third-party system with their APIs exposed. And then again, the same problem because ultimately that data will flow between the two systems. So you will have legacy data migration, which can, which can cause issues. You can have third-party APIs integration, which can cause issues, similar issues. Then obviously related to this is uh, when you have two systems uh, uh, you have multiple systems running in your environment you need to schedule, schedule some batch jobs which would be running overnight or maybe uh, running hourly uh, which are actually updating your two systems so which are actually syncing your two systems and making them talk so it may be that some of the jobs that your technical team might have written they are not tested properly or not scheduled properly and they miss uh, those kind of uh, data uh, floating in, back into your target system so you will have data in one system but since your jobs have not been scheduled properly they didn't run properly you will not have that 
up to date information in the second system so if a user might have updated his uh, address in one system and that has to be synced to another system but since your job has not run that updated address would not have uh, shipped to the target system and there are two systems now with us with the same customer or same member having different addresses right so that again causes bad data because the information is inconsistent or inaccurate then the fourth is because what you do in a system is uh, input data right so your members are inputting data your internal team is inputting data into the system so it may be that if you have not put sufficient checks in your system or sufficient validations which we knew was talking about uh then what will happen is uh, if you have not put that the data format should be in this format and you should not allow any other format into it everyone will put a different format date into the system and then obviously because uh for someone it was ddmmyy for someone it is ddmmyyyy for someone it is mmdd so everyone will have a different opinion and if you don't have those kind of checks in your system bad data is going to flow into the system so ultimately it's these four things that we have identified that actually leads to 95% of the bad data in your system Nidish, before you move on, I wanted to ask a question. I know we've been uh, working with a client recently who has an API integration for their membership data to go into, um, uh, sorry, their event data uh, for conferences, registrations to go into their AMS, um, and that we're working with them on that situation. And the question came up, um, one-way sync or two-way sync? And I know there was a lot of conversation about, you know, how how where where is the most trustworthy data is it coming from the registration or is the salesforce or fontivo or nimble is that the uh, record that's absolutely correct do you have a feeling um do you have a recommendation that's kind of blanket that says that you know a one-way sync or a two-way sync is better for um, data for debt for data health uh actually uh, see it depends on uh, whether we want a one way sync or a two way sync but generally when we integrate systems it's actually both ways uh, because you will have and it doesn't matter whether it's a one way sync or a two way sync because even if it's a one way sync right where you imagine that your data is flowing from salesforce to ams and not vice versa but if uh, the data is bad in Salesforce CRM, and even it's a one-way sync, which is it is flowing to AMS. So uh, then, obviously, it's like that Salesforce CRM data, uh, same data goes into your AMS system and makes it corrupt because you have not done enough health checks on the CRM system uh, before moving the data to another system. So it doesn't matter whether it's one-way sync or two-way sync. I think the uh solution here is or the uh, solution to the problem is that whenever you are doing any kind of sync it's always recommended that you do a data health check uh, of the system from where the data has to flow into the new system uh, because if you don't do that uh, and you keep on uh, doing a sync uh, as many records as many bad data and the problem will just grow and at a point of time, it will grow in such a huge scale that it would be uncontrollable and uh, uh, you don't know what to do. And then you will start searching for help. Uh, my reports are not correct. My I'm getting a lot of duplicate data. I'm getting missing data. Uh, people have memberships, but uh, they don't have a membership date. When they joined, I'm not able to run analytics. Because to understand your customer, uh, you need to have correct data for him, right? Unless you know, uh, like, if as an example, right, uh, you may have a member, right? But, uh, and you, they may, some members may be miss, missing the membership dates, right? Uh, these date when they started their membership. Now, if that data flows into the new system uh, and you are trying to understand how to get a list of members whose membership is expiring, you don't have those dates because the data is missing in some of the members. 
So if you have 10,000 records and there are just uh, 5,000 records in which the membership date is there, you are missing those 5,000 members and you can't do anything about it. Uh, what you will have to do is search for those records in the legacy system from where they have been migrated and then vice versa. And then you will realize that, oh, it's not just the missing date. There are so many duplicate contacts in my legacy data. And oh, it's not just a duplicate contacts. Oh, it's like inconsistent data as well. My date of membership here is this. In this I think second record, it's here. So n number of problems. So it's always good to do a health check of the system from where you are uh, exporting the data to another system. Yeah, Neeraj, then you face a one-way sync or a two-way sync. It doesn't matter. Thank you. Uh, Neeraj, I know that um, some of the future slides that you're about to show us have a lot of detail on them. There's some great screenshots. I think if you go into presentation mode, it might be um, useful for our visitors today to see. Oh, sure. uh, that's great. Wonderful. Thank you. So let's talk about some yeah. um, real-time issues with uh, some of this data. Sure. So, it's, and these are actually uh, the issues that we have from some of our uh, existing issues from our different users and that we occasionally have. So, as you can see, right, uh, in this, we have got a membership. Uh, whose status is active, right? Uh, so here you can see here, right here, the status is active, but the batch pertaining to that has expired, right? So will you can you guess like what would be the problem for this? Why this might have occurred? You want me to put input here? Okay, so if, <laughs> if it's an active <laughs> status and the badge is expired, could it be an issue with a workflow or uh, an assignment of a field uh, that was not triggered correctly? Oh yeah, something like that. So it's it's like I told you, there were four main reasons. So here what happened was uh, the job that actually syncs the batches with the membership data uh, that didn't run properly on that day. So instead of updating the batch expiry date, they didn't update it, though the membership was active. The batch expiry date should also have uh, been renewed, but we were not able to do it. So most of the records, the batches got expired, but the membership was active. So it was more of a job not running properly in the system. and. This is this is something that you can only notice if and you can only notice if you run your the data health check on your system. So you should have some kind of report which tells you that oh these are the users whose membership is active but the badges have expired. So unless you do that kind of data health check, you will never realize it. And this system is going to store more cases like this, and it will just keep the heap of those cases. And I can see how this could happen very easily. Once you set up a system in the beginning, whether you're the um, Salesforce or DBM manager that works on setting up your Salesforce instance, or if you are um, you know, a marketing manager, membership manager um, who helps design that system, once you set that system up, you expect it to work. Um, so it's kind of taking advantage of the system kind of doing what it should be doing, but we should be checking on that work, almost like a teacher-student kind of uh, environment where the teacher tells oh, the student right. what to do and that's the student right. does it, but somebody has to check yeah, on the student, true. right? <laughs> great, yes. this is yeah, a great example. Should the student that, whether he has done his homework or not, right? So <laughs> similarly like that. So, yeah, so we can move to another case. Now here, if you see, right, uh, we have uh, got people coming, your members coming and buying something in a shopping cart. Uh, so they have entered all these details uh, and then they fill it. And then we, if you see this green, right, light green button, it says process payment, right? So 
what was so we noticed uh, our customers complained that uh, actually customer bought just one item but we had multiple uh, sales orders from the same customers and he's complaining that he didn't do that uh, and uh, it was creating incorrect sales uh, order lines so what we realized was that uh, the problem with the system was that this process button as soon as the user clicks it right it should just gray out and you should not allow user to uh, click it another time right unless the process payment has been processed because what happens is if you click that button right and it doesn't gray out or uh, allows you to click it again people might think that it has not done anything and uh, they might click it n number of times so we realized that this is the problem and then we actually went there and changed the code to gray it out and we also put in a message where we said that please do not click the process payment button more than once or you may incur additional charges right so these are small things right which we don't realize uh, they are usability issues and we cannot blame the users because they don't have experience using your system right they are new to your system uh, they might miss things but as uh, an owner of the system it's our responsibility to uh, validate all these kind of stuff and provide them with a user experience where they can uh, actually not do these mistakes because if these mistakes happen uh, right and these are financial transactions that are happening for the users and uh, instead of 150 dollars if you are charging them 500 dollars they would be surprised they might just not process the payment anymore and they might not come to your system because they fear that this system will extract $500 from them instead of $100. So <laughs> I think uh, for a better user experience to save ourselves from all this, uh, uh, we should have some kind of validations in the system, uh, which can provide a better user experience. Yeah, so the you user know, inputs having... I was talking about as, sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say having experience, you know, being on the front line of answering phone calls of helping members and registrants, because they did exactly that they pressed the button too many times or they refreshed the screen. So it's not only the member experience, but it's also the staff time that takes to assist um, assist those members right to say okay what let's figure out what happened let's correct the problem, but the amount of time that the organization invests in trying to fix that problem. And uh, once you've identified what that problem is and trying to help um, guide the users on the front end, uh, I'm sure will be very helpful. But, you know, Neeraj, I have to say, it sometimes feels good to blame the user. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, a report that we so we generally ask our customers to do a regular health check and we as a consultant to them always uh, prefer to pull these kind of reports for them so if you see this report right uh, it will you can see the you can see here this term id right this is all missing out here so this is a, just a sample of the report so as you can see in this report we have got nine records right which are in the active state but their term id is missing so if the term ID is missing and you pull out the reports, which wants you uh, to determine something on the term ID, you are going to miss it, right? So unless you know uh, that these are the records that are missing and correct it, you will never have correct reports. And these are, these are all real examples that we fall into. So this is a classic example of missing term ID. And this happened because uh, we actually uh, did this migration from uh, one of the sales for customer or one of our customers actually uh, bought an AMS and they did their migration from uh, Salesforce to Contour and uh, a lot of term IDs were not missing out there and so subsequently that information got, got carried out of here. And uh, when we realized what the problem was, we realized that it was more of a data migration issue and there were not just nine records, right? We corrected many of that uh, in from the legacy data. So we not only corrected the data in here, we actually went out and did an activity to correct the data in the legacy system as well. 
And I think this also just goes back to um, during that um, integration period, migration period, during trying to get ready for launch, you get so caught up with just setting up the system. By the time you go to launch, you want to take a breather. You want to take a breather and just hope that the system's working well, but you've got to put those checks in place to make sure that it's working the way that you set it up to. That's true. This is very, very important. And most of the issues that uh, we, most of the support issues that we get from our customers is, I think 50 to 60% of the issues that we get is all these bad data issues, right? Where they're not able to get uh, data, reports pulled out or there is missing information in the screen and something like that. And then when we pull out and do a root cause analysis, we find that Either it's a legacy data migration that was done or it was a third app integration stuff or it was something related to user inputs where we have not put uh, some mandatory checks on the front end or is it uh, something related to uh, the user inputting incorrect data. So either of those four reasons uh, uh, that I talked about. Now this is about the duplicate. So this is a duplicate contact reports that we fold in. And if you can see, we have first name, last name, so many duplicate contacts. This is just a few, right? Uh, and if you run those checks, and I bet every system has that, uh, no system is clean, but the amount of web data that we can have in system is really alarming. Uh, we have got cases where are like, there are hundreds and thousands of records which are like duplicate records. And that actually is a pain uh, for the users, for the technical team who is working on it, uh, for your members, for everyone, right? This is a pain. And I think there's also. So um, the... Sorry, go ahead. And I think these are uh, some of the. Uh, and these are the real life real life issues that we face every day, daily, uh, monthly, every time. Like, and this is going on, right? And uh, in the next few in the next slides, I will tell you like how to how we can actually prevent this happening. Like I told you, it's always good to have uh, prevention is always better than cure. So we can cure it, but if we can prevent it, and we can enlighten the people on how to actually prevent it right from the beginning, I think that, that is something that we need to do. And that is, I think that is the whole motto of this webinar to have preventive measures to uh, prevent this bad data entering into your system. It's almost like having, if, you're, if you have a house and it, your ceiling is leaking, you have the option to kind of spackle it, paint over it, um, and it's visibly okay. But have you dealt with the root of the issue? You probably need to get somebody on the roof to check to see if there are leaks uh, to prevent that from happening again. It's kind of the, along that same thought thought process. You have your short term fix, and then you've got your long term more the better fix for this uh, for the problem. Yes, and. To that point, we know, right? Uh, uh, I have found most of the technical consultants uh, doing a kind of temporary fix where uh, they will say, like, oh, these are the 10 records we have to fix. Let's fix it. Done. Two minutes job finished. Now, what they don't realize is they don't try to understand uh, that why these 10 records are duplicate. Because unless you understand the why, right? Why? and how of it right then what what will happen is you are going to do these temporary fixes daily right so we at applicify what our team what we have trained our team to do is uh, just not fix those records if it is an emergency then fine you fix it right but always try to do a root cause analysis and find the source of the problem so that we can enlighten our customers and users that this is the source of the problem and let's fix it so that you don't get these issues further, right? It may take maybe 10 days to fix it instead of two hours, but I think that is worth the effort spent to prevent further leakage of defects into your system. 
Well, let's get into your processes. What are some of your suggestions on how we keep this clean? Yeah, so I think, uh, as I told you, we need to do a health check. And when I say data health check, uh, if you can see, these are the kind of uh, dashboard uh, we prepare. We call it a data cleansing dashboard for our customers. So if you can see what we have done is we have pulled in various reports, which shows these are your duplicate contacts. These are your um, missing preferred addresses. We have missing preferred emails here, right? We have got uh, missing uh, state of all contacts, contacts with membership, without membership. So all these kind of uh, dash reports we pull into, and uh, these are visible to the uh, business users as well so that they can see and validate that this is the bad data lying into their system. And I think what we can do in the, uh, uh, what I will want to show in the next slide is, you can actually use these kind of reports to create a continuous uh, cycle that we should have because this is not just a one-time activity uh, that we should be doing. It has to be a continuous activity so that we keep on churning bad data out of our system and keep our system clean. So these are the kind of dashboards and reports that we produce. So this is a kind of uh, 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 data health check that we have done, but the next slide determines like what are the action items after that that you have to take to keep your system clean. You know, before so you move on, it, right? uh, Neeraj, what I liked about that screen that you're showing that it's just not a laundry list of bad data. It actually tells us what the bad data is and a visual uh, indication of where we are. This is the, a check. It's almost like a medical report with the heartbeats and everything of saying, you know, here's yes. where your levels are. And I think that is a great, it's, it's great for a visual, especially for leadership that need to understand that, um, yeah, their expectations is that we may need to do a mailer for 10,000 people, but we're missing 5,000 mailing addresses. Um, but to make that a, a realization and making data cleaning a priority. That's true. And I think this visual representation gives you a much better uh, a feel of uh, how the system is looking into or how your system data health is looking into. Because people are able to visualize more rather than reading reports. And once you go into this dashboard, you can actually drill down and uh, get a summary of what is missing, what is not missing. Right. So it's a great these dashboards are user. Yes, uh, users find it very useful uh, to get these kind of uh, missing data reports. So that was the data health check and. Uh, so this is what we recommend uh, to everyone for as a continuous process that they should be doing for their data cleansing cycle. We call it a data cleansing cycle or a data cleansing framework. So first step is to run the health check reports, which is actually this. This is your health check report, which gives you a health of your system in a visual format. So this is your, so you run these health check reports now, since, as you can see in this dashboard, these are dashboards which you can share with your business users. So your business users can actually see this dashboard. You can share that dashboard with them. And so second step is share those reports with your business users because they are the ones who actually own the system. They are the ones who own the data. So it may be that uh, they, want, they say that we are okay with uh, these members not having membership data dates or these uh, data births not in the system. So you need to get an approval on those exceptions uh, that your business users tell you to do. So they may say that out of these 10,000 records, I just want these 7,000 to be cleaned because these 3,000 are uh, not valuable to me or I don't want to do anything with it. So maybe you get an approval on the exceptions uh, because only business users can do that. And once you get an accept, uh, approval, you need to run some kind of scripts on your data to clean it. So you may, as an example, if there are like missing term ID, like we saw in the report, you may have to insert those uh, missing term IDs by getting that data and running a process which actually inserts all that missing term IDs into your system. 
uh, similarly with inconsistent dates you can uh, uh, correct them and once you are done that right what you can do is you can again pull this kind of dashboard report right and show those reports to the users and get an approval from the users that the data has been corrected and they are good with that data right because they are the users who own the data so it's uh, very important that you coordinate with them you work as a team uh, and you get the sign off from them that we have corrected it and they can actually go in the dashboard and see that data has been corrected and you compare the reports right once so you can compare this dashboard with the next dashboard that you have done by amending the data and they can see that how the health of the data has improved uh, by the scripts that you have run in your system and they can compare it but this does not end here you again have to do run health check reports again the same process so it's a continuous cycle that you have to do and it has to be a coordinated effort with the business users with the technical team uh, with your testing team with whoever is involved so maybe get your all of your stakeholders there and coordinate with them and run this cycle uh, continuously right it is not a one time process it has to be a continuous process uh, because your system's health is important and to monitor your health you need to do regular health check health checkups like you do the regular health checkups for your body right similarly if your system is a body and your data is the heart of the system so you have to keep that heart healthy and pumping so that it flows blood into your system and uh, it keeps you healthy and your system healthy and gives you mental peace as well. So Neeraj, I would say that data cleansing is probably a, a big priority for any AMS or CRM to, to constantly do that and to, to have, have it as a dedicated um, task that's done. Um, and so whether, whether a staff person, there's someone dedicated on staff to do it or you get some help from outside, but it should be something that is routinely done. I know that with a lot of our clients that uh, we work with, this is a lot of the work we do because it does require a lot of time and dedication and focus to make sure that the data um, data stays clean, is, it he is healthy. Um, so I know that you know for for some staff people, especially if you're you've got other initiatives, you've got other strategies, your job is much more than just working on Salesforce that. Um, it, this is a piece, uh, this is a project that can take a lot of time and require a lot of focus. So sometimes getting that extra help um, just to maintain your data integrity um, could be a, a good way to get some help there. Neeraj, we have some That's questions. Are you ready for some questions? Yes, sure. Now, some of these are going to be a little bit more um, like technical and detail. One question that we have is, uh, what are some good ways to prevent duplicate contacts from being created? Yeah, so like I told you, right, your duplicate contacts can uh, be either of those four sources, right? So maybe what you can have is as uh, in your front end systems, you can have uh, validations on your system that, uh, so suppose, uh, you are entering your first name. So what we do in our systems is uh, first we do an algorithm which says uh, it is a combination of first name, last name, your date of birth, and your social security number. Now, if you enter the same data again, right, and try to save it, what our system does is it actually says you that this user already exists, right? Because there is no person who can have all these four things the same, right? So either it's a duplicate record, so it's always better to have your systems validation in place so that you don't allow this uh, combination to get into your system in the first place. So that is the best way to prevent uh, duplicate contacts getting into your system. If you don't have that, uh, if you miss that step, then obviously you, you cannot prevent duplicate contacts entering into your system. So always uh, check of maybe have some algorithms in place, like I told you, first name, last name, date of birth, social security number. Maybe not that social security be, uh, number. That's a security issue. <laughs> That's a security issue. They don't have, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So. But um, 
Yeah, and I, I find that most organizations use email as email addresses as the threshold of um, that's the unique factor. So you're saying here, maybe take it one step further and have an email address, plus maybe some other things that uh, a match could be made up to determine whether that contact is Correct. definitely unique Correct. or not. I think, right, right. I think there should be a combination of either four or five factors in place, which you think uh, should be there, which cannot be duplicated, right? It has to be unique. A combination has to be unique. So it depends on you what combination you want to pick. Yeah. And I know, um, I know we work on this issue quite a bit here internally here at Classify is dealing with the issue of people who have professional email addresses versus personal email addresses. And how do we bridge those contacts together and kind of uh, find that because what we don't want to do is send out the same uh, webinar invitation to the same person under two email addresses ideally we'd like to just um, be careful of what we're sending out and um, so another another check to do but that's a little harder if the um, if it's on unique email parameters so i have another question cool. here um, or um, i have another question that someone asked about um, about postal addresses. Is there an application or an integration that you recommend um, that can be done in Salesforce to check postal addresses? Yeah, I think there are a lot of uh, uh, softwares that you can actually use. Uh, so uh, you can have, what you can do is uh, most of the uh, people who, so instead of doing a manual inputs for the postal addresses what you should do is uh, have a kind of uh, integration where you enter the postcode right and uh, it automatically uh, fills in your address right so you have a lot of uh, address databases where you can actually integrate to uh, uh, so it just uh, avoids manual input you just have to put a postcode and you say search and the address is automatically populated so that will ensure that the format is correct, the first line, second line of the address, uh, the street name that would be taken from the system itself, which you have integrated. So there are a lot of softwares available like that. Yeah, if you go to Salesforce App Exchange and search for postal addresses, I'm sure you'll get quite a few listings. Yes. Um, the other thing to think about, I think, is how you use um, that API, whether it's only on um, the staff part back in the Salesforce, actually on the Salesforce window that your staff is using, and if that's only staff can see that, or if it is actually front facing as a, as a UI experience for um, a member who's typing in their address, is that something that comes up as a verification? So, so many different, um, so many different options that you can um, implement with something like that. And each application is different. Um, and so it really depends on what is your needs and trying to find one that fits you best. Um, um, we have another question here and I, this kind of goes to my heart. Uh, we end up having dupes because an employee might register for an event and use another email address that isn't in our system. Urgh! <laughs> that is something yes. definitely within your control. I have a few thoughts about that, but Neeraj, um, any thoughts or advice on that? Yeah, so like I said, like you can have those kind of uh, checks into your system where uh, it tells you like that same person is residing in your system with a different email ID. Right, so you can have a combination check and see, oh, this is a user which already exists and his email is this is this, but now he's coming up with a diff different email ID. So I think uh, that is more of a duplicate contact stuff that uh, algorithm we should work out. So there can be a number of stuff that we can do for that. So one of the things that I ask staff to do when we are testing out forms, we're testing out registration, we're trying to break the system before a member uh, actually tries to break it. Uh, try to do as much as we can in terms of that testing. I ask staff to um, use either, if, if they're using an alternate email address, 
that they provide us what that email address is so that we can go back and clean up the database later. Um, also provide instructions specifically to staff. Um, let's say they are legitimately um, registering for an event because they need a badge at a conference um, and they need to do a staff registration and um, they can't, you know, one way is to make sure that you set up a staff registration ticket um, and that it, it can only be done if they use their um, staff email address. The other thing is to, um, uh, when you do the tests, routinely check those tests and delete those tests out of there. Um, and if they do use an alternate, um, it, but also treat your staff just like members who are registering for an event. Give them very clear instructions saying step one, do this, use this email ID. I think a lot of the um, pre-education of how to register um, we do a great job. I think a lot of organizations do a great job of that with members um, and even handholding board of directors, but we forget about our staff or, you know, we may have new staff or we have, we may have changed the system. So that's something that we um, should take on as to educate our staff as to how to do this registration and, um, and the importance of it, um, because that will also empower them to help members and other staff people too. And also pushes the, um, the value that clean data in your organization is important. Um, I think sometimes not all of us realize how data affects the entire organization. Um, now, Neeraj, we have a very, um, very specific question here. Um, I have a couple of graphs on my dashboard. One graph shows some of amount across the x-axis in thousands. How do I change this to just some of amount? Um, I'm a very visual person. I would need to see this on screen, but I don't know if you have any tips or advice um, for this. Sorry, what is that? I missed it. You know, so it's in the Q and A. On the x-axis. So on, so uh -huh. we have a graph here. It shows the sum of amount across the x-axis. Sum of amount. Yeah, I think okay. it would be this way, right? So how do I change this to just sum of amount? But I think a lot of those settings, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's two ways to do it. Adjust it in your settings um, in your dashboard with each individual object. You can go and, um, oh, sum of amount to read $1,000 instead of 1.00 thousands. Oh, I think that is something. Uh, so if, if they're showing that in the dashboard, it must be, pulling out of some reports, right? So I think that is something that you need to change uh, in your report, right? Or if uh, you are uh, maybe, or something in your dashboard settings, right? Where you need to change either the unit or something like that. So it's more of, I think it depends like, oh, how do you want to change it? What the exact issue is? Uh, but uh, most of the time, the dashboard just pulls in data from the reports that you have actually prepared for it. So it's more of uh, doing it with the report. So yeah. maybe if you have a technical person or a Salesforce administrator, he may be able to help. Uh, if not, uh, uh, maybe you can uh, send us the query and we can let you know how, how to do it. Yeah, Robert, we can connect with you offline on that. Um, but I know from manipulating dashboards and reports myself, there are several, there's several ways to change a dashboard object and report. Um, and it's not always the same way every time. Sometimes it's within the, the, within the dashboard object where you have to set those settings. And sometimes it's within that report. So it could be either or and but or, or both. It's um, Salesforce is never just a straightforward answer. <laughs> it's a little bit more complicated, but we're happy to help you with that. We'll have to probably do a screen share and take a look and help you out. Um, is Does anyone have any other questions for us? Keep them coming. These are kind of questions we like to hear. And and what I also hope with these webinars, when we when we hear from you, is to let you all know that you're not alone. 
Um, there's no silly question. Um, the Salesforce can be a labyrinth and um, one, I think one of the best things that Salesforce does for us, also a fun team at Nimble, is to have these community forums where you can share your questions, um, share your big wins, your lessons learned. So um, this webinar is kind of an extension of that to share some of those learnings. In the meantime, Neeraj, anything else you would like to add today? Uh, I think uh, uh, what I would just want to stress upon is uh, make sure that uh, you as a team, when I say as a team, uh, your internal users, your business users, your technical team works as a team and makes uh, data health check a priority uh, because as we've explained in this webinar, how dangerous it, it can be to have bad data in your system. And always, uh, I would always recommend having a data health check team in your place because if you don't have a data health check team who is going to monitor this stuff, uh, this data cleansing cycle that I'm talking about because it has to be a continuous cycle that cannot be monitored. And if it cannot be monitored, then obviously your data health check is not monitored. And then obviously you cannot control the bad data creeping into your system. So have a dedicated team for it. Uh, go and do a continuous data cleansing cycle, as you can see in this uh, uh, cycle and make sure that you have all these preventive measures and realize the and you work your team works on the source of the problem rather than just fixing it because source of the problem is very very important to understand to prevent further damages to your system so i think that is my last piece of advice i would uh, have everyone who is who is in this webinar or hearing it well thank you very much Neeraj. i know i got a lot of takeaways from today's session one Bad data is bad. We need to take care of it. We need to have a process. And, um, and that process is continuous. It's not a one-time thing. So uh, hopefully this has been a informative webinar for all of you. Thank you again for joining us. Neeraj, if you can pop up that last contact slide, if you have any questions for us or need more information, definitely reach out to us. We'll reach out to some of you that uh, we can get to your questions uh, or need additional help. We'll definitely reach out to you, but definitely watch out for our email. We'll send you the recording. We'll send you the slides. And if you hopefully you'll join us for some future webinars. Thank you again for joining us. Have a great week, everyone. Bye bye.